Hello, my name is Jeff Mee Jones, CEO and lead developer at JMJ Applications. The purpose of this video is to go over and to show a technique that we use to get the touch detection to work for the libgdx library in a video game uh, by touching a sprite in the game. Okay, there are many ways to do this. Uh, there's actually a more accurate way to do this, but we wanted, for our purposes, we wanted a brute force, quick way to detect whether your click or your touch uh, is at the exact location where our sprite happens to be. In theory, the code seems rather easy, but there were some issues we ran into, and that's why we want to go ahead and put out this video to help those who have ran into the issues as well. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is let me show you our game that we're working on. Uh, and hopefully by the time this video is released, or maybe sometime after, the game should be released to the public. Unfortunately, uh, the source code is not open source, so I can't put this source code uh, on the video. What you're going to have to do is just watch the video and see the code and type it in for yourself. Uh, but let me go ahead and run the game for you. All right, it's a space-based game. It's going to be pretty fun. I can't go into details about the game, but let's just say it's going to be fun. Check it out. If this video really helps uh, you and uh, your projects that you're working on, it would be great if you could uh, check out our game. And check it out on any one of the platforms it's available for that you enjoy to use. iOS, Android, desktop, and so on and so forth. But I digress. Here, we're looking at the ship. Um, going down the screen and essentially we want to be able to touch it and determine that we have a touch for that ship now in theory you would believe that if you touch the compare your X and Y where you touch versus where the ship is if they equal then that is a touch detection but the problem is that the X the ship's X position is right here in the corner okay and let's take a look at that code wise as well okay so here is where we're going to detect the touch and when you touch down this is given to us by the libgdx library the x and y positions uh, basically what we want to do is tell if our x equals the same then give us a detection but we'll go ahead and do that now this prerequisite code that I've written here this just proves that the x and y that we're getting is the same in the game uh, how I did this and why I did this is specific to my game yours would be different uh, but the main goal is that when you do it to um, what I'm doing is drawing a little pink or purplish dot rather on the screen to prove where I'm clicking is where the touch is happening so let, let me show that working when I touch the screen you're gonna see I'm drawing a little dot to prove that where I'm touching is where the um, click is happening now what we want to do is pretty much tell when that pink dot is over the ship then let that detect the touch let's go ahead and write that code first of all we want to get one of the ships uh, in your code if we have an array of ships you would use a some sort of algorithm to determine which ship you want to detect or even use brute force to check all the ships or all of your objects on the screen uh, for this sort of method again this is a dirty quick method way to do this there's other more efficient ways to do it but this is a quick and easy way to do it here so I've, I've gotten one of my ships out of the array of ships that we have on the screen and what we'll do next is just get the let's focus on X first and then we'll copy and paste that for Y and we should be okay let's write a little bit of code here I have to move the microphone so you may hear the audio quality change let's go ahead and ship x equals and we'll do we'll get that ship that one ship and we'll get its position or I think it's uh, dot get position here we go and we'll get its x position okay now you would assume it would be as easy as doing this if my X I'm touching equals the ship's X position, then go ahead and print onto the screen. 
and we're going to print to the law cat here as you see let me turn off the uh, the print function that I have now okay so let's clear out the law cat and run this code this doesn't work and I'll explain why what we're doing here is that we we're saying if our X position that we touch is the same as the ship's X then um, get print out to the, to the console once I click here the X position is so fine it's it's down here we're not getting a printout or a read we want anywhere in the ship to tell and it shouldn't matter if I click up here or down there because again we just focus on the X axis, axis but I can't get it to detect so let's just say for demo purposes we're gonna say if our touch position equals X of the ship or greater then print out to the log cat and what we'll do is we'll do let's just change that around so if my touch position X is greater than or equal to the ship's X then print out to the log cat so what that should do now is I should be able to touch here and anywhere above here I get a printout but anywhere below I won't get a printout and again it's working no matter where I touch on the x-axis I can be up here and go across because we're just worried about um, just worried about I'm sorry it works anywhere on the y-axis because we just are asking about x so I can touch down here up here that's all y but as long as I'm greater than this I'll print out. So what essentially we want to do is stop it once it's here. Okay. And stop our detection rather once it's there. But I'll go ahead and show you. So here I have Photoshop open and what I want to show is that when you let me grab a little marker here. Let's say X is here and that's seven. You know, our float of seven. Let's say here is zero, right? And you go. So obviously seven is the same anywhere along the Y. And that's why I can click anywhere here and I'll still get my reading. And let's say here is nine, right? So we want our detection to stop at around 8.1, 8.4, I guess. Let's say that. That's where. So from 7 8.4, let our click work on the X axis. But stop it once it's at 8.4 well guess what oh, excuse me the um, the 8.4 is the x-axis plus the width of the ship how simple is that right so what we want to say is that if our click is equal to 7 or greater but stop at 8.4 so in that range and then it, the click should still work. So we'll, let me go ahead and show you how we do that in the code. All right. So what we'll do is we'll rename this to the ship's start x, and then I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this whole entire code, and then we're going to say end x. <clears throat> okay. Now, and then we want to do this is going to be the x position that the ship is currently at plus its width, the width of the ship. Well, you would assume that I would grab the, the one ship that we have and then get its width or something along those lines, but we're not going to do that because in our game, our ships are exactly the same size for every ship. And so the ship's variable for its width is static. It's hard in memory, never changes. It's, it's final. It's, it's definite. So I can access that through the ship's class itself and not the one instantiation of ship because for every ship it's going to be the same width and we'll do that all right and so now to to do that in the if statement you would do if the start position is greater and so both of these questions have to be true and the end or let's say well you know what let's copy this code I'm a big fan of copy and paste and then we'll say the in position is less than the ship start x position. Oop, I did that backwards. Sorry. We're gonna leave my touch alone. We're gonna do the in position here and less than. Okay. Save that. And again, just to recap what's happening here, if the ship, if the x position we touch is greater than the ship's x, and also has to be true that it's less than 
the ship's ex with the ship's exposition plus the width of the ship. All right, let's run that code. Well, let's clear out the console and let's run that code. I'll wait for the ship to stop. <clears throat> the ship does a lot more than what it's doing now, uh, but for the copyright protection, I can't disclose everything. Uh, but we'll just do this here for now. All right, so what I'll do is I'll click here, and again, we see nothing in the log. And I'll click here, we'll see nothing. But then when I click here, we get something, and anywhere along here, we get something because that's the width of the ship. Once I get about here, we stop printing out. Let me clear out the log cat, and I'll click here and show you that we've stopped. And once I get back in here, we're back detecting our click. So we're all set. All right, uh, and again, it works anywhere because on the y axis, because we don't care about y for this time being, we're just looking at x. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for y. And essentially, again, me with my well, let's group this code a little better. Uh, put this here. Okay, I like the way that's looking. Let's put this here. We'll do that just to make it a little cleaner there. All right, and what I'll do is we're going to go ahead and copy this and do the exact same thing, but for y. So we'll go ahead and make that y. We'll go ahead and make that y. We'll go ahead and make that Y. Uh, let's see here. And let's see. Y, Y. The ship's Y, Y. What am I missing? Well, let's go ahead and replace these variables. Oh, we'll take this and we'll do Y here. And we'll do Y here. And we'll also do Y. Uh, oh, for these variables. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And we'll change this to Y as well. Now, there's one thing that's wrong with this code. Oh. There is one thing that we are. Okay. All right. There. All right. There is one thing that we are forgetting here, and that is the ship's width. Now, when you look at the game itself, the ship's. When we're dealing with the x-axis, we worry about the ship's width from here to here. But from y, it's going to be from here to here. So it's the ship's height. So we'll do that. And again, each ship has the exact same height. So that's not a that's a static variable. So we can access it. Uh, size, height. Yeah, there we go. That directly in the class versus using the one instantiation of that class. All right, now uh, I believe all this should work. Let's go ahead and run it and check it out. Close out the other version of the game. All right, I like to wait till it stops, and I move this out of the way so we can see the console. And when I click, as you can see, nothing. When I click, X is uh, accessed, and let me do it this way as well. I can do it from here. I should be able to click M Y is access. It works here. X and Y both. Let me clear out the console. When I click directly on the ship. Okay, but when I click here, because we're not worried about X, we're just worried about Y. If I can do it here as well, Y works. When I get up to here, it stops. When I get down to here, it stops, and so on and so forth here. So. X and Y is working. Okay, so what we want to do now is combine the two. Let's close out the game. We want to combine the two where we get the output from both and then trigger the results. And what I'm going to do is put that in a separate void or a separate, uh, rather, method because it's not going to be a void. It's going to return uh, the true or false variable. So let's check that out. And I'll, I'll write that here. Uh, Let's do let's do it here. And we'll do a boolean. And then we'll say x or touch x true. Or how should I word that? Touch x I don't know. Let's just say that for now. I don't know remember what I uh, termed it before and then we'll say get touch X I will right, we'll do that 
and then we'll do the same for y. Okay, we'll do the same for y. And what we're going to be checking is the comparison between these two variables. Uh, let's see. I should run this. Let's send it the ship itself. We'll need that in that method, and we'll need the x position. Let's do that. And then we'll do the same for this. We're going to need the y. And then what we'll do is I'll do the if statement here if and what we'll do is if this is true and and if this is true then we'll do print out to the screen touch touch working on X and why both both <laughs> all right let's save that and what we'll do is have eclipse and uh, if I didn't mention this before I'm running it I'm using eclipse as our compiler and as our work environment rather and then we'll do here create y Thank you, Eclipse. Now, I'd also put those variables in there as well for us because I put them in there. All right, and what we'll do is the exact same code here for x. And what we'll do, instead of printing to the screen, uh, my x position. How come it's not returning that? Oh, wow, okay, I'm using the wrong variables. Let's use my x my Y. This is the touch X or touch Y where the ship was uh, touched down at. And then we'll change the name of this to touch X. Oh, I'm in the wrong code. Look at that. They created it backwards. I guess I asked them to create it backwards. So we'll do that. I want to do X first and then Y second. Okay. Change this to variable. Alright, and we should be all set there. Perfect. And just for future reference, we'll do my Y here so that it works once we get down there. Okay, and instead of doing that, we'll just return true. Now, essentially what we're doing is that same code we did earlier, but what we're saying is that if this all works out, then return true. If this doesn't work out, then just return false. And our boolean is set to true or false based off the outcome of that if statement. All right, and we'll do the same for the, what do we have a problem with here? What's going on? Oh, this is not an integer, this is a float. Okay, so we'll do this here. Eclipse tried to make it for me, but it didn't do a good job, but that's okay. All right, and then let's go ahead and copy this code. And we'll put it directly down here. And again, we're just gonna return true we're not going to print out anything and we should be all set there let's try to clean this up a little bit here visually all right so we have our ship uh, we have our all right so let's take a look at it first we have the correct x and y coordinates on where the screen was touched at these don't equal the x and y coordinates for our particular game and then we draw a debug uh, little purple dot to prove that our X was correct where we touched now that we know that these values equal the correct X in space in, in real life in real game life uh, we go and we get one of our ships now you're gonna have to either brute force and grab all of your sprites this is one of my sprites that's on the screen or however you choose to do it uh, we're gonna actually go with a if you're familiar with Android you may not be but Android has a on-click listener we're going to invent our own little on-click listener for our sprites, and each one of our sprites is going to implement the on-click listener, and it's going to be triggered once this is touched down, but that's neither here nor there. And then we'll do um, <clears throat> all the heavy lifting to see if these two coordinates are in range of each other. Ooh, that's a good idea. Get touch range. There we go. I like that idea. Get touch range. 
get touch range. I don't know why I'm so particular with that. I don't like that either anymore now. <laughs> I'm picky. All right. Well, we see if it's in range. If it is, return true. If it's not, return false. Now, if these both of these guys are true, <coughs> and again, if you're a programmer, you already know, but just we don't have to do this here. Ah, the microphone's in my way here. You know, uh, if that variable is equals equals true, then do this. If you're asking, then it's true. And if you're doing that, then you're asking if it's false. But we're just asking if it's true. Okay? If it's true, print out. So let's check it out and do it. Let's run it. Print out to the console. And voila. It worked. I wanted to wait till it stopped, but look at that. Okay. No matter where we touch in the world and when we touch on the ship itself, then we get our things. There are several things to pay attention to. Do you want to be 100% precise? You have to do your calculations a little different. Uh, you know, like I'm actually touching here. That's not really touching the graphic image of the sprite. Does that matter for you in your game? You know, it's up to you how you want to create the algorithm. But this is a basic core idea of touching a sprite on the screen how many sprites you have um, you know and that sort of thing so that is awesome so that's working guys um, if this really helped out for you please check out our game the link will be in the description below or even uh, somewhere annotated on this video once the game is available uh, how tr uh, I can't put the source code in in the description so you're just gonna have to use the theory here and figure it out on your own unfortunately uh, but other than that uh, we had a good time learning this library this new we're just now learning this libgdx library and it's fun and so if you guys are newbies to the library as I am then I hope you're having a good time as well alright thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel this is my personal official channel um, for Jeff Me Jones and all of my goodness will be here as well. Peace.